everyone, it's Supply for Doctor. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I am a foot and ankle surgeon and podiatrist out here in Houston, Texas. You can follow me here on YouTube or on Instagram or on TikTok, still the Fly for Doctor. Welcome. So today we're gonna be talking about something that I don't think a lot of people know about and it's Charcot foot. We're gonna be discussing what it is, what causes it, what are some of the symptoms and what can be done about it. If this is something that you're interested in, stick with me and we'll get into it. All right, what is Charcot foot? Charcot foot is a disease condition that could either be of neurological origin or because of excess blood flow. There are essentially two different theories as to why this happens. Nothing is set in stone yet, but we have these theories. Essentially what happens is the foundation of our body, the foot starts to break down. Now we all know if we don't have a solid foundation, whatever structure, whatever building that you're trying to create will just crash and crumble. Same thing that happens. If the bones in the foot are not solid enough to handle the weight of the entire body, guess what? Your foot starts to crash and crumble. And this is what happens with Charcot foot. Essentially, it happens due to either increased blood flow or like I said, peripheral neuropathy, which is microtrauma. So essentially what I mean is that patients who have diabetes or any sort of neurological issue that is affecting the ability for them to feel will start to have little micro trauma. Things as easy as just walking down the street or hitting their foot by the door seal or something like that will actually cause their bones to break or their joints to disintegrate and they start to have something called a rocker bottom foot or an abnormally appearing foot where they'll start to have protrusions in places where they shouldn't have protrusions because basically the bones are just out of whack, they're out of place and they're moving in whatever direction that they feel like they need to move to. Now, this may not be a big deal or anything other than the fact that they may not be able to wear shoes normally because like I said, the foot is breaking down, it's going in different places and things are just not holding up the way they're supposed to hold up. And so what now happens is they have an abnormal shaped foot that can't fit into a shoe, it makes it very uncomfortable, their foot is unstable and so they aren't able to walk properly, they have an unstable foundation to move on and even worse and more disturbingly is they may start to have things called ulcers. So these ulcers will break down, cause an opening in their skin that can lead to infection. Now we are th there's a threat to the limb or life. And so this is why Charcot foot is very important, especially if you have diabetes or you have any nerve issues. Now, what causes Charcot foot? Like I said, two theories. Um, there's the French theory and the German theory, and one of them talks about peripheral neuropathy, meaning that there is lack of sensation, and so the accumulation of microtrauma, meaning just small little actions that will normally not cause a healthy patient to have a break in the bone or a disintegration in the bone, will cause that to happen in a patient that has neuropathy. The other theory is excess blood flow in patients that have Charcot. You can see they usually have bounding pulses, meaning they have enough blood flow. They are not like patients who have peripheral arterial disease where we're struggling to get blood to that foot, okay? It's completely different. These folks have blood, but they have a little bit too much of it. And the idea is that increased blood flow washes out the bone, and so the bones are now so soft. And when they're so soft, it's causing them to become soft and brittle and just can't handle the everyday works of life that normal feet and bones can handle. So how would you know if you have charcoal or if your loved one has charcoal or your friends or your family or your neighbor or your parents or someone has charcoal? Well, here are some of the symptoms you should look out for. There might be an abnormal shape to the foot. You look at the foot, this is a normal shape of the foot. Most people have a similar shaped foot. If you're starting to see a protrusion on the bottom of the foot or on the sides of the foot, or sometimes maybe in the top of the foot, they may be having a breakdown of their joints or of their bones. If one foot or one limb is significantly warmer than the other, then you definitely wanna see a foot specialist or a foot doctor so they can check it out and make sure that you're not actually going through an acute charcoal process. Also, if it's red, hot, or swollen, that may be something you definitely wanna check out because that could be charcoal as well as an infectious process that's happening. So definitely make sure you get that checked out, especially from a foot specialist who sees this all the time. Now. Let's say you are unable to get to a foot doctor or a foot specialist or anyone that can take care of you 
What can you do at home if you think or know that maybe you're diabetic, you have neuropathy because you have pins and needles sensation, you can't feel, there's numbness, there's ants, um, biting sensation or burning and things like that. If you've combined all of those and you think maybe you have charcoal, what you can do is to immediately immobilize it. Because again, we've talked about the bones being weakened, the joints are weakened. It cannot handle, the foundation can't handle the weight of your body. So immediately you want to immobilize it as soon as possible, okay? Because if you don't, there's gonna be continuous breakdown in the bones and those bones could actually push down to the skin and could potentially cause a corn, a callus, or even an ulcer which is a bigger thing to deal with. You wanna make sure that you are very vigilant in monitoring your foot. You wanna make sure that you are inspecting your foot and your ankle between your toes, at the bottom of your foot, the top of your foot, every single day. If you are unable to look at the bottom of your foot yourself, maybe you can't lift your foot up or you can't bend, then make sure you have a mirror that you can use to inspect your foot, inspect between your toes, and look to make sure that there is nothing that could be causing, that could be breaking down or any wound or anything. Now remember with diabetes, things just go from zero to 100 in two seconds. So you can look at your foot one day and not look at it again for the next three days and you look and there is a full blown raging infection in there. So it is absolutely important that you look at your foot every single day. Feel the temperature of it. If you have someone who cares or someone who's around to kind of help, make sure that they are looking at your foot to look and inspect and make sure that nothing is breaking down every day. If the shape of the foot has already been compromised and it's already kind of broken down and now the bones have solidified and healed in that abnormal shape, there are custom shoes and custom bracing that can be done to give to patients to prevent further breakdown and also to prevent ulcer. Most especially, we wanna make sure that the skin doesn't break down and form an ulcer because an ulcer in the presence of diabetes, and when I say ulcer, I also mean a wound, in the presence of diabetes, it's just a lot of headache to deal with. So if we can take care and make sure that those areas are padded appropriately and they're braced appropriately, that will save you or your family member or your neighbor a great deal of headache. And last but not least, something that you can do at home or is conservative treatment is activity modification. Now, if you know you're prone to getting shark or breakdown, you don't want to walk five miles. You don't want to do extraneous activities that could cause further breakdown and further stress to your foot. So we want to modify our activity, take things easy. Now, I am not saying you can't exercise. There are lots of exercises like swimming, maybe even riding a bike, even a gentle, you know, walk, nothing brisk, nothing high impact, should be able to be great because we wanna definitely make sure that we're exercising, but we just wanna do it reasonably. So we're not further breaking down the foot. Now, of course, there's surgical treatments to everything out there, but you're not watching this video because you wanna have a surgical treatment for your foot. You're probably watching it for information on how you can avoid this. So here's how you can avoid it. Make sure that you keep your blood sugar under control. Now, the moment that you may have just been diagnosed with diabetes, you wanna make sure that you are keeping a tight glucose control, making sure that your hemoglobin A1C is within normal range, making sure that you're not eating a lot of processed foods, excess sugar, excess salt, because all of those go hand in hand and can help break down your system even further. Like I said earlier, making sure that you are looking at your foot and inspecting your foot every day. If you notice that there is a difference in your foot or your skin, make sure as soon as possible to see a doctor. You want to make sure that you're following up with your foot doctor, your foot specialist, so they can inspect and help care for any wounds, infections, ulcers, prominences, calluses, or anything that could be going on in your foot, especially if you have diabetes or have blood flow issues. And all in all, make sure that you're wearing comfortable shoes that are not putting excess pressure or causing friction in any part of your skin that could then cause a breakdown in your foot or your skin. If you think you have charcoal, make sure you see a doctor as soon as possible. If you have numbness or tingling, see a podiatrist. If you're in the Houston area and you want to see me specifically, you can give us a call at 832-415-1790. Or you can follow us on our website, denealfootandanklecenter.com. Or if you have any questions that I am able to answer, you can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok. It is the Fly for Doctor on both platforms. Here on YouTube, it is Apply for Doctor. Now, if you benefited from this video, 
Would you consider sharing this video with your friends and family? You just never know who may need it. It also helps the algorithm pass it along to everyone so we can reach and help to educate as many people as possible. Also, would you consider giving it a like? And like I said, share it. Now, what comments or questions do you have about Sharko Food and what's the thing that surprised you the most about this video? I definitely would like to know. Let me know down in the comments below. Till next time, it's a fly for doctor. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.